Well, welcome everyone. Welcome back to the Health Made Simple Show. Glad you're here. Glad to have you. Tonight's going to be another perfect example of how we're going to do our absolute best to make health simple for you. We're going to talk about a topic tonight that was a question that was sent in. And uh, this is something we I talk about every single week, probably every time I'm in the clinic. To, one way or another, I'm talking about this topic and the topic is arthritis. So um, we, I'll have you give me the question in just a moment, yet before we do that, we'll kick off with a little bit of a clinical insight that I had today as well. Fantastic. I, I love these. Yeah. So clinical insight, if you're new to the show, of course, welcome. And the clinical insights are insights that I have when I'm with people practicing. I think, man, this would probably be great just to share with everyone because it applies right across the board. So here, here's my insight today. So I'm having a conversation with one of the clients that comes in and and even though there was a very specific moment that this came up, this too comes up all the time. And this is one of the very specific strategies about health that is often forgotten. And I know why we forget it. And the re- and this is the strategy is this, is allowing time to work for us, not against us. So the health strategy that is probably the least observed or, or kind of taken for granted is the ability to let time work for us. So in this particular uh, situation today, I was having a conversation more than one time. One time I was talking about how much time it takes to heal in that that's just wide open conversation. And then also how much time are you willing to give your body to heal? And I've shared many times here on, on the Health Made Simple podcast about my recovery with my knee. It was 18 months, folks, 18 months that it took me to technically completely get my my knee to the point where I could say I have zero knee issues. I don't have a, an old knee injury that bothers me anymore. My knee is rock solid. And through that, many, many times I wanted to quit, but I also knew that we are designed to heal and that if we continue to give our bodies opportunities, and that's the key here, many opportunities are often needed, not just one or two. And that's how the conversation came up today, that through time, we get to experience more things. So for me, with my knee, I did a whole bunch of different knee exercises. I was cleaning up my diet. I was getting more rest. I was doing some red light therapy. I was doing many things. As time went, I was able to get exposed to more and more things. And one of the big ones that was a game changer for us was the sound wave therapy, and which I'll, I'll talk about tonight as well. So uh, just a clinical insight for everyone. Just remember, when you are healing, I don't care what it's from. A head cold. Do not discount the power of time. And that is where I would say I see most people make some really, really big mistakes is not allowing the element of time to be part of healing. So Bart, if you were to find yourself in that moment where you think, oh, this should be done by now, is there like um, a tool you could give us to help us change the mindset? Well, other than just just the constant reminding of to yourself that your body was designed to heal. And if it's still talking to you and it's still having a conversation with you, it's just saying, hey, I want more of something else than what I'm getting. And that's the kind of faith that we have to have. That to me, that so when we talk about practicing health, that might be the absolute single most important part is the practice of having a good conversation with our bodies. Yeah, it's almost like a fluency that you can develop over time, kind of in just the practice of listening and responding. It really is. So often if my body's hurting, it, after I get over the poor me and this sucks and what happened and blah, 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 eventually I'll get to the conversation of what is my body asking for? And for me, I'll be honest with you, most of the time it's saying rest. Mm. Yeah, most of the time it's saying rest. And I think that probably applies for a lot of people. And we're not the good time falls right into that. Like we're not allowing enough time to rest relative to what we're asking from our bodies. So let me, I'll share with you two other ways that were uh, two other times that it showed up this conversation of time. So two other people showed up in different language, different conversations saying how tight they were. Doc, I'm so tight. I feel like everything in my body hurts a little bit. And in both scenarios, the reason for the tightness was fatigue. And what's the primary cause of fatigue? A lack of rest. So one of the things that are bought, that we often forget, and I think it's not discussed enough in health, in healthcare especially, that one of the reasons that our body will get tight is because it's tired. 
So innately, intuitively, it starts to tighten down and inhibit the ability to use the body. So it doesn't feel good to move because it's not well rested. Combine that with one of the other ways it can get really, the body can get really tired is if it's toxic. And so toxicity probably causes as much of the tightness that I see out there because I can literally touch the body, feel the fascia. So though that's just another realm of where time plays such an important role that if we allow ourselves enough time to rest, literally our muscles will loosen up a little bit better and they will not feel as tight all the time. I think there's also something magic that happens with us sometimes when we're uncomfortable and we think like, oh, this should be like fixed immediately. And we like somehow magically forget that it took us a little while to get here. So it may take like a moment in order to like have a new scenario. You know, you're absolutely right. And part of the challenge there is that I think almost every day when we turn on a commercial and we see a drug commercial, we're hypnotized to believe that we're not supposed to experience anything uncomfortable for any duration. So our symptoms are supposed to go away right away. And that's just not the truth. So, um, you know, just a nice little insight of a reminder to everyone. Time is your best friend. Allow it to be back in your life, and especially when it comes to whether it's a head cold that you're trying to heal, low back pain. And if your body continues to hold those things, just reminder, just keep asking yourself, what else does my body need? And often it's going to need something additional, otherwise it wouldn't give you any problems. And in order to get those things in a sufficient manner, it's going to need time. Such a good reminder, Bart. Um, I know that we definitely want to get tonight to this um, viewer question that came in. So like, even if you yourself are not personally affected by this, I bet you know someone who is, Bart. Are you ready to step into that conversation? Yeah, let's dive in. Great, great, great piece we're going to talk about right here. Amazing. So here is the question that we had come in recently, folks. What is the best remedy for arthritis? Yeah. So any way you want to shake down the conversation about arthritis, I think it's important to start right from the root causes. So the meaning this, let's not just jump to, oh, well, this is good for pain and this is good for muscles and whatnot or joints. Let's let's break this down to make this really simple so we understand what arthritis is. And I think this is a bis, a big disconnect right here. So Typically, we're talking about two different types of arthritis because it wasn't really mentioned in that question there. And the two different types of arthritis will, will either be rheumatoid arthritis, and that's actually considered an autoimmune condition. And we'll, we'll, we'll address that in just a moment, but also osteoarthritis. And when we take either one of those, let's just take the, the word arthritis. Arthritis means arth means joint and itis means inflammation. So in both scenarios, really what we're looking at is inflammation of the joints. So right away, we know that we have to decrease inflammation. So how we get there is going to be important as well. So osteoarthritis, now we're talking about bones. So that's what osteo is, bone. And then we have osteo, which is so bone arthritis. So we have bone and joint inflammation. So that's that's the most common. That's the most, when people typically diagnose with arthritis or they have overuse injuries have been running for a decade or two or something like that. And they say, well, I have arthritis in my knees. That's usually the one we're talking about. Rheumatoid arthritis, it can be detected through a blood test, but often, unfortunately, we'll see this visually very uncomfortable too. You can see it in people's hands. This is the one when you see someone's hands or maybe someone listening to this can understand their knuckles get swollen and they start to twist and bend. Very, very uncomfortable. And it's this nonstop state of this hyperinflammatory state. And it's really just de 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 destroying, it's decaying the bones underneath. So let's, I'm going to break down both of those. And so the, any of the listeners, um, keep doing the thing, keep sharing out, keep spreading love. Because if you understand this, this is, this is the, this is how you get to the root cause and then also can help fix yourself. And again, I'm not playing, you know, doctor here for anyone, but I'm just going to give you an idea of how to help your body overcome this through some really uh, very, very simple ways, quite quite frankly. Let's take rheumatoid first, first, because this one, when it's considered autoimmune, with most often, unfortunately, we're told, really, there's nothing you can do about this. The body's just attacking itself. There's kind of something wrong with you and maybe take this medication or this drug or whatnot, and there's not much you can do. And I'll, I'll tell you, that's absolutely wrong. It's a wrong way to go about it. Um, there's a lot we can do. So as we discussed here on the Health Made Simple show before, that anything when it comes to autoimmune, probably 95% or more of all autoimmune conditions out there 
start with one premise, one common reason, and that common reason is leaky gut. So if you have rheumatoid arthritis, one of the things that you really want to address and will make a game changing, you know, part of your life, especially for your discomfort, will be addressing the leaky gut. So make sure you get with your, you know, you're going to probably need to get with a functional medicine doctor to help heal that up. And then once you do that, then you got to kind of understand what's going on with the joint. And I'll, I'll walk you through this a little bit, but I really want to spend a little bit more time on the osteoarthritis part. So once we have leaky gut, Literally part of the gut opens up these little walls, these junctions in, in the gut leak open up. And when those tight junctions open up, what's on the inside of the gut, the intestines leak out and they start to float around and be in areas they're not supposed to be. And it could be bacteria, it could be parasites, it could be food, it could be our nutrients. But either way, things are going from one area that they're supposed to be in, which are intestines, into areas and parts of the body they're not supposed to be in. As these things float around, they land in areas, and that's when your body, well, your white blood cells that are floating around looking for bad guys go, hey, dude, you're not supposed to be here, and it attacks it. Once that happens, that starts the process of this autoimmune condition. Now, it doesn't turn into an autoimmune condition overnight. Way, way, way before the autoimmune condition actually starts, it's typically inflammation and joint pain and achy sore and fatigue. Now, there's this very specific thing that can happen with rheumatoid arthritis. And some people listening to this are going to think I'm absolutely nuts. And others are going to say, wow, I haven't heard this. This might be a game changer. And I'll tell you, it is for a lot of people. And it's like this. So in our joints, I'm, I'm doing a little deep dive here, but so be it. In our joints, one of the thing that there's a high prevalence of is something called, well, there's glucose in the joint and there's also amino acids, the things that make up proteins uh, that's in the bone matrix there. So when we put those two together, glucose and amino acids, that's glucosamine. And many of you have heard of the supplement called glucosamine that we use for the joints. And that's true. We can use glucosamine. In fact, sometimes I use it as part of the strategy for people with arthritis. The challenge here is this, is that there's something else that loves glucose and it loves proteins. So that's what amino acids are. The bunch of amino acids put together, that's a protein. And that's parasites. So when parasites leak out of your intestines, there's not uncommon that they will find wherever there's a steady food source. And that's in the joints. Where it gives me the creepy crawlies in my elbows. Yes, as it should, Whitney, as it absolutely <laughs> should. So the parasites go to these areas and they start to destroy those joints. And in order to heal these, we have to go back to heal up the gut. And then we have to go and do things like the simple parasite protocols, which we've talked about here on the show as well. So I, I don't know which episode, but you certainly could find that here. So that would be a good episode. And then that would be a good remedy to start to, if you if you or anyone else, you know, have been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis to help your body function better. And what do I mean by that? Improve your gut health, heal up the leaky gut, and then also go after the parasites. And then the other part that I'll talk about when it comes to nutrition, we'll talk about this for both of these different types of arthritis would apply for both of them, meaning the, the rheumatoid and the osteoarthritis. So before we step into the osteoarthritis part, um, just to check in, in the case there's someone listening who um, knows someone in this circumstance or even themselves, would you be a functional practitioner that would be able to give them a hand in kind of walking this path? Yes, 100%. I just wanted to make it that it doesn't have to be me, <laughs> but certainly I'll gladly welcome in. Yes, these are the kind of things we see every day. And these are, this, this is part of what makes a practice for me so much fun because so many people are literally changing their lives by just changing up some of the simple things that they're doing. Because here, when I say simple things, Whitney, we're already eating. So and what 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 I think becomes hard it's when we have to add things into our life that take more time from our life. That's hard for me, but I'm already eating. So if I refine what I eat, fantastic. I already take some supplements. So if I refine the ones that we're taking, fantastic. So those are the things that I think can make life very simple. We just change the strategy, maybe train, change the tools that we're using. And when we do these, and all of a sudden we start getting results. Go, wow, maybe, maybe there's some other ways and other things I can do to improve my health as well. So the answer is yes. Glad to help anyone that I can. Perfect. All right. I've just put the contact information in the chat. Should any of you all wish to reach out? Okay, Bart. So osteoarthritis. Okay. Osteoarthritis. This is probably the more classical type of arthritis that most people are familiar with. 
And so th there's a couple of ways that this goes about. One I'll say for both of these is that foundationally, these are foodborne illnesses. And you're not going to hear that from traditional doctors. You're not going to hear that in medicine. You're, you're going to hear more things like, oh, your dad had arthritis, your family, your members, your, you know, your cousin, your aunt, your neighbor, your dog, whatever. They all had arthritis and maybe that's why you have it. And I say that jokingly because this is not a genetic gene. This is this is something that we create in the body. Now, it also could be caused by repetitive use with misalignment or abnormal loads. Hmm. Meaning, like our spine, there's a lot of a lot of people will get X-rays of their spine, and one of the first things they'll hear is that you have a little bit of arthritis in your spine. And that's what they're really saying. You have a little bit of osteoarthritis in your spine. And that the spine is a classic example of abnormal loads, meaning poor postures over time and the joints start to wear out. So there's certainly that component. But a better way to look at this in general is the simple law of demand and supply. If we demand for a lot from our bodies in our joints, Maybe you do run a fair amount. Maybe you're using your shoulders. Maybe, you know, any, any part of your body that could be arthritic, which is any and every joint. If you're using that body part a lot and it runs out of the nutrients that it needs to recover and repair, that's when the destruction starts. That's when that joint, the osteo, I'm sorry, the arth part of it, the arth of the arthritis becomes inflamed. So the joint becomes inflamed at that point where it does not have the proper nutrients to recover. So for example, not that anyone would do this, maybe you get home from work, you go for a three, four, five mile run and then have a big dinner, a couple of glasses of wine afterwards. No one would do yeah. that, part. No one would do that, right? That'd be silly. Or maybe you have a couple of glasses of wine and the first thing in the morning you get up and you go for a run. And they seem so subtle, they seem so innocent. So, oh, you know, you run off your bad foods. But this is a perfect example of inhibiting those joints from getting the proper nutrients. And then once the body becomes inflamed, now it's harder for the joints to get the nutrients literally where they need to be. So this idea of, or, or what we call systemic inflammation, which is the type of inflammation you have when you have a diet that's creating inflammation. So whether it be gluten, or whether it be alcohol, or whether it be processed foods, or too much glyphosate, any of these things that we could be experiencing in our lives, all of these things could be, you know, starting the inflammatory process, all of which will then downregulate the supply cycle of nutrients into the joints. That's an interesting um, cycle of how everything informs everything. And I know that it must feel like you're just, um, what is it? Like you exercise off a bad diet? Yeah, you really can't run off. Of, that way, yeah, right? yeah. You, you can't outrun a bad diet. You know, and, and the challenge here for the most part is that a bad diet doesn't hurt when we exercise. So the, the correlation is is not very direct for people. So it's not very common. And, and arthritis is typically something that takes decades to actually form it, you know, to create and to put into formation. So we're talking about repetitive, and this is time working against us, quite frankly. It's funny that we're talking about time. Yeah, this is time working against us. So if you have arthritis, know that you didn't wake up one day and get it. You didn't get it just the day you saw the MRI or the x-ray, which we really see more on x-rays. Didn't happen that day. This, most arthritis will take a minimum of a decade to create bony formation changes. A little bit different if you had broken bones, you'll see some issues there with scar tissue and surgeries and whatnot. But most arthritis, is they're a decade in the making. So we're talking about the inability for joints to get the nutrients that they need over years and years and years. So you think about the you know standard American diet and which we call the SAD diet, which we're, we're really looking at waking up with cereal or you know, pancakes or waffles or muffins or, you know, or bread or, you know, toast or something, which is all carbs and sugar. And that right there is enough to just inhibit how well the nutrients get into the joints. Those sugars are going to be pushed directly into the bloodstream, utilized by the muscle or the brain as fast as it can be. But the joints where things that need to be regenerative over long periods of time, they're going to be limited, in, you know, big time from the ability to get actual, you know, nutrients into them. So this process happening over and over and over again eventually leads us into this diagnosis of you've got yourself some arthritis.
So even if you are kind of pre-symptomatic or pre-diagnosis with arthritis, with some of the information that you've shared so far, Bart, kind of on this 10-year spectrum, the remedies that you're going to give us tonight, would you find that those can be applicable for wherever you may be kind of on that time frame? Yeah, 100%. That's, uh, so, you know, and a, a decent question would be, hey, can you reverse arthritis? <laughs> you know, and it's one we don't even, a lot of people want to attack. Well, the answer is yes. You can improve your joint function. That That's the answer is yes. So you can't change your diet and take an x-ray next year and think that it's going to change over time. But we know that the body remodels to stress. We know that's what is called Wolf's Law, which is, you know, just a, a law of physiology that bone remodels to stress. So if you take away that stress and you load up the spine properly, you realign the joints and you're getting the proper nutrients to them, your body over time, yes, will start to kind of absorb back what it does not need. Now, traditionally, they'll say that does not take place. And it's because we're looking in the minute time frame. But if we look at it over a decade of doing better and taking care of your body, you know, and we do see this at soft tissue. We see people that take better care of themselves and they get more mobility, especially like back into their discs. We see their discs all of a sudden have better showings on x-ray. They see that there's more hydration in them where they once said, oh, these are old discs. You have degenerative joint disease taking place, which is right in line with arthritis. So if over a long enough time period of good, living, <laughs> clean living, uh, the mind, how we move, how we eat and how we think, we can see those changes show up. And most importantly, even if they don't show up on x-ray, you feel better. So yeah. never too early to start, Bart, what can we do about it? Yeah. So there's a couple, couple routes here. So there's, there's number one, the overarching things that we have to reduce the amount of inflammation in the body and the joints are not the problem. So we want to be gentle. We want to stop injecting them with things. Mm. We want to stop beating them down with drugs because when I say beating them down, there there's little sensors in your joints. There's little nerve receptors that are trying to talk to your brain and saying, what you're giving me right now is not so good. It's starting to hurt. We're breaking down and I'm sending these pain signals to try to get your attention. I'm knocking on the door to please do something different. And the reason I say that, I'm not even saying it joking, but we keep injecting them. Get, guess what else we keep doing? the very thing that's making them hurt. Mm. So then we will destroy that joint and maybe to the point where it hurts so bad, then one day doc had to get it replaced. And it's because for a decade, we used steroid shots, we used aspirin, we used Tylenol, we used everything else to stop listening to the body. But on the flip side of that, the quicker we can listen. So to your point, the sooner you guys to make your joints, today's the day you start. So here's how we go about it. All right, number one, Big, powerful, easy one. You're already doing it. Just do this one better. And that's sleep. Sleep. Yes. Sleep. Amen. It's when we heal, right? We heal when we sleep. We know we're not, we're not healing when we're awake. We're always just moving and grooving. That's when we replenish. So focus, be, be an artist, be a master of our sleep. And don't discount how much time we need as well. Many people that try to fight this one, but listen, shoot for eight hours minimum. If you get more bonus to you, you're not going to feel worse. Most likely you're just going to feel, you know, like anxious that you got to go have so much energy, you want to go burn it up. So that's worst case scenario. So sleep is critical. Most people clinically that have a lot of arthritis are not good sleepers. Hmm. And their patterns are that they stay up late. And then in the mornings that when they do wake, they end up with a lot of caffeine and they end up with a lot of stimulants and sugar to keep their body going because of the poor sleep pattern. So we know those are, that's kind of a no-no there. Number two, there are definitely therapies that are very, very effective. And these aren't probably the most traditional. There's a couple I would say, I'm going to throw in that category as therapy, yoga. Mm. If we move our body gently, but we elongate, we stretch it, we twist it, we bend it, we move it, we are going to help our joints get the nutrients where they need to be. As we help our lymphatics, as we help the muscles, tendons, and ligaments of these aging bodies, and yes, we are all aging. Some of us are farther from 20 than others, but nonetheless, as we move our body and create more muscle fluidity and we create more balance, more structure, more strength within the body, we are also helping the joints. Awesome. So absolutely love the idea of anybody at any age doing some type of yoga. And there's many, there's a, there's a yoga for everyone out there, which is beautiful. Nice. All right. The next one. Yeah. This one might be a little biased, but listen, 
chiropractic adjustment, creating spinal alignment. And actually, you know, so someone like myself who practices, I adjust ankles, ankles, knees, hips, joints, doesn't matter. If there's a misalignment, there will soon be dysfunction in that joint which means it probably will get inflamed. It probably will get tight. So getting it properly aligned allows for better nutrition to get to those joints and better function. So if you haven't, so today was a fantastic day. It was, it was in, in, in the sense of clinic, I had several people show up with no ailments and that doesn't happen that often for the first time. Yeah. Many just a wellness care. Just right? a wellness for their first time. And, and it's always, um, I love the consciousness and I, I don't know, and I feel like we're seeing more and more of it. So literally some people showing up today, just, yeah, I just think that I probably should, and they'll be 40, 50, 55 years old and say, yeah, I think I should probably be getting adjusted. Everyone else seems to be doing it. It's so such to, a powerful choice. Yes. It, it really is. And to just for them to start to start, wow, I'm using this body that has so much movement, so much ability, I probably should look into taking better and better care of it. So hats off to those people. And if you haven't tried it, um, ask a friend. Most of your friends will have a chiropractor that they absolutely love and go see that chiropractor. Great way forward. Yeah. Bart, what else can we do? Therapy. Yeah. So, so diet, no doubt here. So therapies, let me, let me, let me go back up to the therapies because we, we got to talk a little bit about diet and some supplements as well. But when, one of the therapies that we're using now, right, right now, which I hands down will probably say it is the single best passive therapy that there is for arthritis. And that's the sound wave therapy that we've been utilizing. We've talked about it several times here. So one of the bigger issues, and I didn't mention it this way yet, um, one of the big issues with arthritis, that it's a lack of oxygen to the joint. As you build up scar tissue, as you build up, as your range of motion decreases, you have less oxygen, and that which really means less blood flow. The sound wave therapy goes in and it starts to bounce off of that connective tissue that's not moving that well that may have some scar tissue, may have some arthritic changes to it. And it literally breaks it up and it starts to remodel it. And one of the beauties is that there's a couple of beauties here, but one of the ways that it does it is it increases the amount of oxygen getting to those body parts. I don't know what in all these years, I've been practicing a long time, I've ever seen anything that does as quick of a job. And I and I say that hesitantly because I don't want anyone ever looking for a magic pill. But if there's anything as close to a magic pill in terms of fast relief, but not just relief, therapeutic changes. This is why I'm so excited about sound wave therapy, so excited that we have it. And if, and if you're not around here and can't get it, there's a lot of other practitioners that have it. It's becoming more and more utilized by especially chiropractors, but every major professional team out there now has it. But the sound wave therapy is absolutely a game changer. I don't care if you've had that arthritis or a bad knee or bad foot, bad shoulder, 15, 20 years. And you know firsthand, Whitney, you're you're the one doing most of it in our office. You've seen the people come in and they say, man, that foot that's been hurting me for 15 years doesn't hurt anymore. It's so exciting to see people experience a change like that and um, to think that it is non-invasive and is just bringing like increased life effectively to wherever that zone is, like a little bit more blood flow, a little bit more oxygen. Um, the results have been really beautiful to witness. Yeah, so it's we're, we're excited to be able to offer that at our, at our clinic. And again, I, I know it's offered you know, in many places all around the country. So sound wave therapy is in terms of therapies, passive therapies, the other two a little bit more chiropractic passive, but yoga is certainly an active therapy. Um, those therapies right there, home run hitter. So yeah, last but not least, definitely not least is diet. So th th these four things, we got sleep, we've got um, the different therapies we've talked about there. Oh, we got supplements too. So diet. Well, we got to get clean, folks. We got to get the sugars, and we also have to get all the processed foods out. This is another reason why organic is so important. It's so head and shoulders above all the rest. If you're putting chemicals into your body, one of the things that happens is that your body try not to, tries not to circulate them back through your heart. Your body has this innate wisdom, and it's going to do everything it can not to inhibit, to break down or jeopardize the most important organs of the human body. So it tries to get rid of them, it tries to slough them off in the extracellular fluid, it tries to displace them into the limb system, it tries to displace them out into fat cells. And often what will happen with those chemicals, they slough off and they land in our joints. So it is imperative that we get the junk out of our diet because the body doesn't know what to do with it. So all of those foods that have glyphosate and all these forever chemicals, do everything that you possibly can to get sugar-free and chemical-free, which means got to go organic. 
All right, last but not least, because this can be very, very effective, and this is how we do it in our clinic. I'll give a couple of different supplements that I recommend. So number one is we want to make sure that we're using a good quality fish oil. Most omega-3s will do that. We use cod liver oil, probably the most predominant in our office, anywhere from 1,000 milligrams, 2,000 milligrams daily. If you have arthritis, you're definitely in that 2,000 category. We need you need as much of these omega threes, DHA and EPA to help your body reduce the amount of inflammation in the system. So that's kind of a common one. I think even the medical community community is very kind of on board with that. The next one, clinically, what I use, we use something called Boswellia. Boswellia is a phenomenal herb. It's a combination of herbs. Turmeric is in there. I love turmeric. So if you're using turmeric, fantastic. But this one called Boswellia Complex is very specifically designed for joints and specifically for people with arthritis. And again, not to treat the symptom, but to treat the body to get to the root cause so your body can function better. So Again, I started this by saying we got to reduce inflammation and those two by themselves, absolutely fantastic. Of course, there are there's things out there like glucosamine and we'll use that on occasion too, but the other two are our absolute priorities. So it's clean up the diet, get plenty of rest, get your movement and get your therapies in, get some uh, the proper supplementation, which would be a good fish oil. In this case, Boswio complex is absolutely fantastic. So what I'm hearing from you, Bart, is yes, we can reverse arthritis. Yeah, so it's in, in a, a reverse, I know this. So you may not be able to visually see it on your x-ray, but over time, you probably will. But your symptoms, 100%, 100%. Beautiful, Bart. Well, that does it for us tonight on the Health Made Simple show. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. And once again, thank you everyone for showing up. Keep doing your thing. Keep sharing it out. We'd love it if you get took some time, go over to Spotify, go wherever you watch this, this podcast on, and with any frequency, give us a review, give us a, give us a like, give us a five star, do whatever you can to share it out. Of course, we're going to continue, continue to take deliberate action for the mind, for the body, overwhelmness, and you all be awesome.